I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The Lord of eternal life be with you. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to church, whether you're joining us uh, from home or uh, you're here with us live in person, which might be um, the last time for a a month, but more on that um, later on. It's great to have you all uh, here uh, worshipping with us today. Today is um, All Saints um, Sunday. It's uh, the time of year when we remember that we um, aren't alone as we uh, come together to worship our Heavenly Father. We come with uh, the saints who have gone before us, all those faithful people down through the ages who have uh, been where you are, who have uh, worshipped God, who have served God in so many different ways. And perhaps in these rather dark days, that's a good thing to hold on to, to remember that we aren't alone. We come together with so many. We continue uh, this service uh, in prayer. So let's just keep a moment's silence before we pray together. so we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, this next hymn is one that um, you just have to have, really, on uh, All Saints um, Sunday. Um, It's a wonderful old hymn with a great tune for all the saints who from their labours rest. A hymn that reminds us just of what I was just speaking about, that we come with the whole host of heaven as we gather together uh, to worship as uh, as the church here on earth, visible, and as the church in heaven, uh, invisible, with uh, our Heavenly Father. So, Cynthia, over to you. Oh dear.
Thank you, Cynthia. Glorious uh, hymn. I once um, heard someone uh, give a description of what uh, or who the saints are as um, a saint is someone um, who's like a stained glass window, like our glorious window up there, who lets the light shine through. Um, Such a lovely description. If we're honest, um, we often don't let the light shine through in our lives. Um, We can be selfish, angry, we can be rather like darkened um, windows rather than a stained glass window. Um, And so before we come to a time of saying sorry and asking for God's help to put those things right, let's just bring into our hearts and minds those ways in which we haven't let um, God's light shine through our lives in the ways in which we've loved and been generous and been the people that God's called us to be. And so as we think about this thing, those things, we pray together. Lord, our God, in our sin, we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And so as the forgiven people of God, we stand to say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our readings. <clears throat> the first lesson is taken from John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, 
he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, be in my speaking and in our listening, that together we would know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. In Christ's name, amen. Sitting on the side of the highway waiting to catch speeding drivers, a state police officer sees a car ambling along at 22 miles an hour. He thinks to himself, this driver is just as dangerous as a speeder. So he turns on his lights and pulls the driver over. Approaching the car, he notices that there are four very elderly ladies in the car, one in the front and three in the back. Those in the back are wide-eyed and as white as ghosts. The driver, obviously confused, says to him, Officer, I don't understand. I was doing exactly the speed limit. What seems to be the problem? Ma'am, the officer replies, you weren't speeding, but you should know that driving slower than the speed limit can also be very dangerous to other drivers. Slower than the speed limit? No, sir, I was doing exactly the speed limit, 22 miles an hour. The officer, trying to contain a chuckle, explains to her that 22 was the highway number, not the speed limit. A bit embarrassed, the woman grinned and thanked the officer for pointing out her error. But before I let you go, ma'am, I have to ask, is everyone in this car okay? These women seem awfully shaken and they haven't muttered a single peep this whole time. Oh, they'll be all right in a minute, officer. We just got off Highway 119. Being driven along at 119 miles per hour by an elderly lady is enough to shake anyone up, but it's something very unlikely to happen to most of us, though there are some very speedy drivers in the village, no names mentioned. Something that will shake us up and will happen to each one of us is losing someone that we love. After losing his wife to cancer, C.S. Lewis was so shook up that he wrote these words. An odd byproduct of my loss is that I am aware of being an embarrassment to everyone I meet, at work, at the club, in the street. I see people as they approach me trying to make up their minds whether they will say something about it or not. I hate it if they do, and I hate it if they don't. Some avoid it altogether. Perhaps the bereaved ought to be isolated in special settlements like lepers. In the same book, Lewis likens grief to a form of mental illness, and perhaps some of us here who have lost loved ones can relate to such sentiments. How then can Jesus say in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, when mourning feels far from anything resembling a blessing? The word used in this beatitude for mourn is the strongest word for mourning that there is in the Greek language. Those who mourn like this see life from an entirely different perspective. Gone are the frivolities in life. It's the important things that count. A well-known journalist 
writes the following of his time spent going to a group for those who were dying or in deep mourning for others who have died. These meetings became for me one of the most meaningful events of each month. In contrast to a party where participants try to impress each other with signs of status and power, in this group, no one was trying to impress. Clothes, fashions, apartment furnishings, job titles, new cars. What do these things mean to people who are going to die or to people in deep grief? These people were only interested in concentrating on ultimate issues and I found myself wishing that some of my shallow, hedonistic friends would attend a meeting. Grief is never easy or straightforward. It can destroy some, but for others, the loss and desperation they feel can lead them to a God who in their pain and need draws near. This has been my own experience of grief in the loss of both my father and mother in difficult circumstances. I have turned to God and found the everlasting arms supporting, comforting and giving me strength in my loss. It was my grief that made me turn to God in a more positive or perhaps, if I'm more honest, a more desperate way than I would have otherwise done. And he did not let me down. Grief strips away from us the transitional, temporary things of this life, things that so often seem so important, and forces us to focus on the eternal, the really important, on others and on God and on his kingdom. This world is not all there is. A central element of Jesus' life and teaching was this radical confidence that death is not the end and that there will be a real resurrection. So much so that he was willing to sacrifice his life for this belief. St. Paul, building on Jesus' resurrection message and on his own encounter with the risen Christ, shared this confidence time and time again in his letters to the early Christian church. St. John does the same when he writes these words, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. For St. Paul and St. John, Christ's resurrection were the first fruits, the first stage of the harvest of all human lives with Jesus' resurrection guaranteeing that those who belong to him will be raised like him. Or, as St. John goes on to write in his book of Revelation, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne. Those who mourn are blessed because in their grief they can turn to God in their desperation and in doing so they can receive a very real glimpse of the peace and strength and new life that God offers to every single one of us. At this time of year, when the church celebrates all saints, the time when we remember that we worship as the church, both visible and invisible, that there is a heaven full of saints gone before us, I encourage you to hold on to this teaching, that death is not the end, but only the beginning of us being able to see things as they really are. Or, as the poet H. H. Barry writes, in pastures green, not always, sometimes he who knoweth best in kindness leadeth me in weary ways where heavy shadows be. And by still waters, no, not always so. Oft times the heavy tempests round me blow, and o'er my soul the waves and billows go. But when the storms beat loudest, and I cry aloud for help, the master standeth by, and whispers to my soul, Lo, it is I. So where he leads me, I can safely go, and in the blessed hereafter I shall know, 
why in his wisdom he hath led me so. Amen. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of year, all saints, when we remember that we come before you but both as the church visible and invisible, that we worship you with the host of heaven. Give us a renewed sense of this vision, Lord, that this life is not all there is. Remind us each and every day of Christ's resurrection, that as he is, so we shall be. And in this confidence, May we uh, reach out in your love, bringing comfort and hope to all, and most especially to those who grieve and mourn, those who are anxious about what the future might hold for them and for those whom they love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we stand to affirm together our faith in the words of this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So an, another great um, Easter um, hymn, I suppose, is And Can It Be? It's one of my favorites. a beautiful uh, hymn reminding us of, um, of the saints in heaven, of God's uh, heavenly kingdom and our calling to that place. Um, this is um, a very contemporary version of uh, that so um, not quite so many verses but beautiful choral music so um, enjoy and can it be uh, in a very different way
And so let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all human need. Heavenly Father, giver of amazing love, shown through our Saviour Jesus Christ, we come to you in prayer. We thank you for the gift of this day and the opportunity to meet as your family in church and online. We thank you for the gift of faith and the knowledge of your saving love. As your children, we have a purpose in our lives, to praise you and serve you. We praise you because you are unchanging, powerful, creative and loving. And we now bring our concerns to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a world so wired and interconnected, our anxious hearts are pummeled by an endless barrage of troubling news. We are daily aware of more grief, O Lord, than we can rightly consider, of more suffering and scandal than we can respond to, of more hostility, hatred, horror and injustice than we can engage with compassion. But you, O oh Jesus, are with us in the midst of the broken world. Your love is not overwhelmed. You carried the full weight of the suffering of a broken world when you hung upon the cross, and you carry it still. May we learn to lean on you at all times and in all circumstances. We ask now that you will guide the United States and other countries through upcoming elections and pray that true results will be accepted peacefully. We ask that you will heal divisions in war-torn countries so that peace can return. We think particularly of Syria and the Yemen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When the cacophony of universal distress unsettles us, remind us that we are small and finite creatures, never designed to carry the vast abstractions of great burdens, for our arms are too short and our strength is too small. Justice and mercy, healing and redemption are your great labors. Help us to hold out our arms and reach those close by to look out for our neighbours and to bring them with your love and care. And may we learn to accept your healing love from others. In the new time of lockdown just ahead, may we draw together as a community and may the church once again be seen as a key player in caring for those who are most affected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. When the day's tasks seem too great, remind us that it is your good pleasure to accomplish your works through your people. But you have never asked any one of us to undertake more than your grace will enable us to fulfill. Please fill us to the brim with your empowering Holy Spirit for the tasks set before us today. Lord, in your mercy, here up. Guard us then from shutting down our empathy or walling off our hearts because of the glut of unactionable misery that floods our awareness. You have many children in many places around this globe. Move each of our hearts to compassionately respond to those needs in prayer so that in all places your body might be actively addressing the pain and brokenness of this world. This morning, we hand over to your care all who are affected by coronavirus and also those affected by recent terrorist attacks in France, the earthquake in Turkey and the tsunami in Greece. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for all those suffering in body, mind or spirit. We ask that you will comfort the lonely and anxious with your peace. We thank you that our prayers can uphold those struggling with infirmity and disease. And today we name Derek, Pauline, Graham, Bob, Clive, Jennifer, Christopher, David, Jenny, Kay, David, Pam. Please be with them, their family and friends, and work through the hands of their carers. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we rejoice that you triumphed over death, and for those who believe in you, there is a place in your heavenly home. We pray for those who have recently died and ask that their pain and suffering will now be ended and they will have the joy of seeing you face to face. We name before you Alan Booth and Ernest Gilbert. We pray for their families that they will be able to support each other and share good memories even at this time of sadness. We also pray for the families of all those who continue to mourn over loved ones. We ask that those attending the bereavement service this afternoon will find comfort in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, loving and wise Father, give us discernment to know when to pray, when to speak out, when to act, and when to simply shut off our screens and our devices and to sit quietly in your presence, casting the burdens of this world upon the strong shoulders of the one who alone is able to bear them up. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join our prayers together with those of Sue's in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So a time to share. Has anyone um, got anything that they would uh, like to um, share with us or inform us of? Any news? Jeremy. Birthday box. We haven't done that for a while. Has anyone had a birthday over the last month? You've definitely. I'm, you should come up front actually and share. We can do that in a minute. Um, who's had a birthday? I've like stand up if you had a birthday over the last month. John, you can stand up. We we can play happy birthday to you and maybe sing very very quietly. So, 
Steve, John, and Jan. Have you, have you, Roz? Oh, we can do that in a minute separately. Right, well, congratulations, and um, normally we give them a gift. There's a book, we can't do that now, so we have a box up here. But what we can do is play Happy Birthday and say it or something. Congratulations, well done. Um, so, w- would you like to bring our new member up to the front? And uh, <laughs> you can't just stand there at the back. This baby never seemed to want to come. It's uh... oh. <laughs> so, congratulations. Do we have a name? So, George Wilfred, welcome to the congregation. Very, um, I like the way it's colour coordinated as well, sort of fits in with the chairs and things. Purple, nice. Hello? Oh, I'm getting a really evil stare. Um, so, a huge round of applause. Congratulations. Well done. And happy birthday. Oh. It's always good to have a new member. <laughs> Anything else to share? Cynthia. Yeah. I just wanted to thank Simon and and everybody for this little slot that we've been able to enjoy during our gathering together over the past few months. I, I have found it so exciting to hear what's going on in people's lives within the life of God within them. And It's so lovely to be able to have the freedom, the unity, and the ability to share the good things of God. And as we go, and we're not going to be together for a little while, let's regard it as an adventure. I I know these are gloomy times. I know it's really easy to get lost, and Sue's prayers were quite right. It's, It's very overwhelming. But maybe together we could... Ask God to give us each day a mini adventure of experiences that are from him, not of our own making, that allow us to share God's love and receive it from somebody else. And it might just be a wave across the street, or it might be standing outside somebody's window and having a funny face through it because we can't go in and talk to them. But, you know, God is, he's got a great sense of humor. And he does provide all sorts of mini experiences which day by day lift us up. Let's just pray together that that will be our experience. And we will be not just church people, but we will be the church going out. That's what he wants. He lives in us. And however beautiful our buildings are. And I find it very touching to listen to those beautiful men men's choir singing that lovely song because I remember the concerts we've had with wonderful male voice choirs here and what a privilege to have this building and this beautiful space to sing in but let's go out with a song and take it out thank you thank you Cynthia anything else anyone John how old were you by the way shouldn't I ask Wow. <laughs> 24, really? 24. <laughs> First, I'm going to tell you about something, and I've had nothing at all to do with it. But I was walking through the village yesterday, and almost by association, I, was, I reflected some of their thanks. And I feel guilty about that, because I had nothing to do with it. But I would like to thank everyone who took part in the Remembrance Garden at the front of the church. Everyone in the village is aware of it, and they think it's magnificent, and so do I. Thank you, everyone who took part in it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, John. That was going to be one of my notices later on. But... <laughs> okay, anyone else anything to share? 
Okay, we sing our next, uh, well, I can't sing it, I keep forgetting that. Um, so our next uh, hymn is about everything we've just been talking about, love divine. That's, what, that's how our Father loves us completely and absolutely. And that's how he wants to, us to love others, to reach out to others, um, particularly this community in which he's placed us, with love that uh, changes people's lives and love that speaks into um, people who are struggling and suffering and are anxious and just need to be loved and supported um, and feel something of the love that God has for them. You, Cynthia. May God give to you and to all those whom you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and in the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love now and always. Amen. 
Um, so a few uh, notices. Um, where to begin? Well, let's begin with the obvious. Um, so you've all heard we are in uh, lockdown from Thursday onwards. Um, I haven't received a piece of paper from the Church of England yet telling me what that actually means. But what it looks like it means at the moment is that there will be no public um, worship uh, until at least the earliest 2nd of December. St. Nicholas will remain open for private prayer, so please uh, do go up there. And everything we do will go online as it did through uh, the first lockdown. So please um, keep looking at the websites. Um, it will have our Sunday services on um, and uh, news about what is actually happening. So uh, keep your eyes on that. With regard to Remembrance um, Sunday, um, obviously what we do this week for Sunday will reflect that. Um, there will be no service uh, down at the War Memorial on Remembrance Day itself, but the, um, the Remembrance Gardens around the War Memorial will be open, um, and there may be wreaths and crosses and things down there which you can um, use for your own act of remembrance. So please do feel free to go into those um, uh, gardens and those grounds uh, uh, to use them uh, as you remember those who have given their lives in the service of their country. Um, uh, the New Forest Basic Bank have a reverse advent calendar which begins uh, today, 1st of November, running through the whole of November. And um, as you're aware, normally on an advent calendar you take out a piece of chocolate or something as you open each of those windows. The reverse advent calendar is about giving something. Uh, there's details on our website, I think it's under the spotlight section, um, new section on the website. Um, but do have a look with suggested items that we can put in a bag or a box each day through November and then give to New Forest Basic Bank at the beginning of December so that they can distribute those. Um, they're doing magnificent work. They've moved into um, new premises uh, recently. Um, and I know that after a few weeks into lockdown, their services, uh, or the demand on their services, went up 500%. So, you know, they are really... Uh, needed so please do help them in that way if you can um, they have just sent an invitation um, to us to come and see their um, new premises uh, on Tuesday 10th of November so if that's something you'd like to do um, do let me know by the end of tomorrow so that I can just they've asked for numbers of people who are, are coming so if you'd like to go and have a look around their premises though saying that that probably won't be happening anymore will it yes yeah, so I forget that yeah that won't happen now. Um, it may happen again at some other time in the um, uh, future. Um, a huge thank you to the poppy makers and planters. As John said, looks beautiful. There's been so many people coming to um, look at that, which is um, great. So thank you for everyone who helped. for you to read um, at your leisure. Um, but just to pick up on Cynthia's um, uh, words, as we enter this uh, period of lockdown, hopefully it's just for a month, but you know, remember, God is in his heaven. We're, we're Christians. As Julian of Norwich said, all shall be well. It will be okay. And every day there is something to give thanks for. Focus on those things. I mean, all the new stuff we're learning about how to use technology. I'm like, I could do hardly anything before we went into lockdown. And, now making films and all sorts of things. Um, and we're learning to rely on one another um, a, a little bit more um, and perhaps to give. And perhaps the other thing we're learning is that we're not in control. We kid ourselves each and every day. Um, uh, Mike and I were talking before this service about all the plans that we've been making for Remembrance Day and they've had to change twice. You know, once because we, we had to think about how we were going to do it uh, under the conditions that we're in. And now it's not happening at all, but we're going to think about how we do it online. So it's, I know it's frightening and it, it, it can be a bit fearful, but actually it's quite good for us learning these things that we're not really in control. But there is a God who loves us and he is in control and all shall be well. We just have to trust and have a bit more faith in one another and, and in God. And, uh, and I'll see you in a month's time. It's fun working with you. <laughs> Would you please stand? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
in the name of Christ. Amen.